So here's an example of starting to do one thing and ending up doing something quite different. The plan was to do, take some video of this young horse being a nice trail horse down in the valley behind our house. Instead, we never got out of the front yard before he encountered a monster in this pile of mulch. So rather than have an agenda, I just started working him through this, and unbeknownst to me, my daughter and camera lady, Kim, was filming this. So we thought we'd go ahead and put this up with a voiceover as we work him through his concern over this pile of mulch. He's pretty sure there's something carnivorous hidden in that vertical pile of mulch, and he's being appropriately cautious to save his life. So I am just working him along, turning him into the pile each time, turning him in the direction of the scary object, keeping his nose tipped a little that way. And if he wants to slow down, wants to rest, let's just let it happen facing the mulch pile like that. He can stand there for a while. If he gets antsy, I'll just move him, but I'm not going to force him up on this pile. I'm going to let him make the decision. As you can see, the part of the mulch that's been spread really doesn't trouble him, but that pile could house almost anything in his view. So he, he's working his way by, but he's pretty cautious. Going a little closer. Now he's going to relax for a minute. So I'm just going to relax with him. Let him have a little bit of time. Turn him again, but remember, turn toward the pile. The scariest thing you can do is to turn them away. It teaches them to flee. And when that pile gets behind their back, that's the scariest moment, and that's when they'll bolt. So turn them toward the pile. Now you can see over on the other side, he was concerned. He's back on the more familiar side and he's a little more comfortable. Gets up there pretty close, gets another little rest. Gets to sit there and soak and think about it. Give him some slack. There's no time limit. Get him over on this side a bit. Avoid going in that tight spot between the tree and the mulch pile. That compression, as with gunpowder, can cause explosion. So we don't get him in that tight spot until we feel a little safer with the, with the program. So now he's doing a good thing. He has his nose down. The sense of touch is very important. And when he touches that, he realizes that it's inanimate and probably harmless. Although, what about this side? Stretching out his neck, ears side to side, crouching down a bit. Still worried about different views of this same dangerous pile. So we're just about on this side again, avoiding that tight area. He thought about selling out and leaving. I asked him not to, and he came through for me. So here we are, facing the pile, giving him the time he needs to think about it. Again, good place to rest. The most comfortable place on the farm. Steps a little sideways, but he's not leaving. Nose still on the pile, gets down, looks. He's over on the side where he's a little more scared, so we're going to work around the back. Still looking carefully, and now I'm about to make a tactical error. What happened? The dreaded straw hat effect. When that dry branch scraped across my hat, that lit him up. Next time I go through there, I'm going to avoid that branch not add that additional stimulus to him. So there I avoided self-preservation for both of us. So we're getting a little closer and this starts to look real easy. Maybe he can step across. Well, he's not so sure he's gonna, but he's not saying no. Why don't we just, why don't we just think about it? Well, he's gonna come across way on the side, but that's a cross. How about we come across this way? Can you do that? Can you do that? Yep, yep, good job. We're going to circle back around again, work our way through the tight spot, take our time with those branches, acknowledge them this time, move them around, let him see they're not going to hurt him. But I will confess I'm keeping them away from the damn hat as much as I can. Although by now I think that's defused a bit. So we get him lined out, pointed at the, at the pile again, He's not fleeing it anymore. 
but I'm not going to push him over and I'll let him decide. And he goes along the outside. Now it's about time to go back through the middle of it. And there he goes. And he gets to stand right there and relax. Good job by the cult. Glad you are watching. Come back and see us next time.